Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure to welcome for the first time here on 101, Dr. Martin Carpe, who is chairman yeah. of surgery at Hackensack University Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are not talking about surgery overall, but we are in fact talking yeah. about esophag esophageal, esophageal cancer, mm -hmm. uh, one of the fastest growing cancers. Um, and this is a concern for a lot of reasons. One of the biggest you were telling me right before we got on the air is, for, by the way, describe what this is, esophageal sure. cancer, so esoph and why it's such a big problem. Absolutely. So esophageal cancer is, is a malignancy, is a cancer that uh, forms in the muscular tube that connects your mouth to the stomach. Uh, and things like smoking, drinking, uh, chronic reflux can cause irritation and inflammation in that organ which can then, over time, lead to uh, cancer. You were saying before we get on the other, one of the biggest problems <clears throat> is the fact that by the time it's detected, there are too often, more than you'd like, more than your colleagues would like, it, it's late in the game. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the symptoms that uh, are associated with esophageal cancer are, are common. What are they? Um, heartburn, um, but most commonly, um, difficulty swallowing, uh, which unfortunately is a, is a late symptom. Um, heartburn is probably the most, uh, most common early symptom that you would associate with esophageal cancer, which is extremely common, and most people with reflux don't have cancer, which is kind of the conundrum because um, we don't want to overtreat patients uh, who have common symptoms, but uh, then at the same time, we don't want to miss these cancers. And by maybe overly uh, investigating, we'll, we'll pick up more. So, okay, so advice to someone watching right now, chronic heartburn, mm -hmm. don't blow it off. Don't blow it off, particularly if you're in your 50s, you've had uh, two or three months of chronic reflux, uh, you're treating it maybe with over-the-counter uh, medication, uh, and it keeps coming back, it really needs to be investigated. So now connect the issue of obesity with this problem. Sure, so we know that uh, obesity is directly correlated with uh, reflux. Uh, and chronic reflux, uh, as I mentioned, leads to inflammation. Uh, and this can lead to a condition called Barrett's. What's it called? Barrett's. Go ahead. So Barrett's is a change in the lining of the esophagus, which uh, has a propensity to then lead to uh, cancer. Uh, and that condition is, is only seen with uh, reflux. So by uh, avoiding reflux, avoiding um, weight gain, it will also uh, help to decrease the, uh, the potentially the uh, incidence of barren. So someone who is overweight or obese, yes. losing weight, dramatically or significantly reduces the risk it, of this problem? Yes, it can certainly decrease the incidence of reflux, which will uh, help reduce the, the chances of getting Barrett's. And the, and, and the cure, if you will, is there yeah, a cure? Yeah, there is a cure. Um, the cure is, is removal, uh, particularly in early stages. Surgery? Surgery, but there are all, also um, methods, non-surgical methods, of removing the precancerous lesions. So um, by investigating symptoms and identifying Barrett's, um, if there's a component of Barrett's which, which is known as high-grade dysplasia. High-grade dysplasia. High-grade dysplasia is a pathologic term that describes uh, a change leading up to cancer. That can be treated without removing the esophagus uh, by a number of different uh, methods but we would love to get to esophageal cancer at that stage because it can be cured uh, and oftentimes you can preserve the esophagus. You were telling me before we got in there about fruits and vegetables. Yes. So, Elaborate. So diet is, is, has been correlated with uh, the frequency or, or the incidence of esophageal cancer. A diet poor in fruits and vegetables is associated with uh, esophageal cancer. It is? Yes. So someone's just heavy on carbs, not enough fruits and vegetables could potentially increase the In likelihood risk. of having a problem? Yes. Yes. In and of itself, the diet matters. Well, it's correlated. 
and it's correlated. It's, there's a connection. I can't say that there's a direct cause and effect, but it's certainly associated. Uh, and that association is certainly tightly linked to, as I said, reflux. Men or women? More likely? Men are more commonly affected than women. Do we know why? We really don't. Age, you said? Uh, age, 50, common 60. age is, is, is early, early 60s. Um, but patients over the age of 50 who are having chronic reflux should have it investigated. Interesting stuff. Yeah. And not getting enough attention. Not getting enough attention. Why is it? Is it because it's not a common cancer? It's not a common not cancer. About much? Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and actually, it had been decreasing for a while, but really in the last three or four decades, we've seen a significant increase. Mm -hmm. And this is correlated with the increase in obesity and reflux. Real quick question before I let you out of here. Uh, we've asked many of the people who have leadership positions mm -hmm. um, in corporate America and higher education and other places um, about leadership. And I'm going to ask you this. Mm -hmm. As the chairman of surgery at Hackensack University Medical Center, the number one leadership lesson they learned, put you on the spot, most important leadership lesson you've learned over the years is? I think it's having, uh, having a vision, having a direction. I think people are looking for a plan, uh, and I think it's very important to, to lay that out. Uh, and um, I think that's been very helpful in, in my career. And then clearly executing it. I want to thank you, yeah. Doctor, for joining us, Dr. Uh, Martin. Um, Carpe, who is the chairman of surgery at Hackensack University Medical Center, I want to thank you for joining us and sharing this very important uh, information. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank Stay you right for there. having me. Stay with us. One-on-one -on -one will continue right after this. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been provided by NJM, NJIT. PNC Bank, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chess Challenge, Steve and Elaine Pozicki, Qualcare Inc., and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, small news, big news, true Jersey, and by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.